What's up everybody, welcome to the Guna channel and thankfully the international break is at last behind us. And what a frustrating interruption to what is proving to be the most exciting Premier League title race of all time. A three horse race to the finish with 10 games to go and these two meaningless friendlies risking injury and the fitness of some of the key players in this run in. We're not really going to know what impact these friendlies have had until we step out on the field against Manchester City for the biggest game of our season so far, and arguably theirs as well. The last big game between the three players in this title run-in. And, of course, we saw injuries. And, of course, the injuries that everybody was dreading reared their ugly head. Not just for Arsenal, who... Had Gabriel pulled out the Brazil squad with an inflamed Achilles, which apparently is just a precaution. We saw Gabriel Martinelli pulled out with a cut to his foot, a foot injury that's seen him limping about on crutches. And then, of course, Bukayo Saka sent home after turning up to the England squad with an injury, which is apparently just a precaution. But the questions around this, why would you call Bukayo Saka up if he's injured? Did they not know? And it isn't just us that's struggling. We saw Kyle Walker go off injured against Brazil. Then John Stones go off as well. We don't know who's going to be fit. And both Manchester City and Arsenal are staying pretty tight-lipped about it. But there is a very real chance that Bukayo Saka may not be available on Sunday for the one game we arguably need him most in. And this leads me to the question... Do we need to go out this summer and sign an understudy to Bukayo Saka? And of course, this has been a subject for a while now. In summer, there was a lot of discussion about who might come in and be understudy to Bukayo Saka. We were linked with Kudus, who of course went to West Ham, Asensio and Dembele, who made their way to Paris Saint-Germain. Michael Elise was talked about. In fact, at one point, it looked like he was going to Chelsea. And let's face it, if you're a winger that's not linked to Chelsea, you're definitely doing something wrong. And Moussa Diaby, who has done really well at Aston Villa in spurts this season, perhaps we haven't seen the best of him yet either. But as a versatile player across the front three, would have been, it seemed, an ideal understudy. But Arsenal opted not to sign anyone in that position. Of course, when we signed Kai Havertz, there was speculation that it might be an idea that he would play there. And we do have cover. We, of course, have Reese Nelson, who ever since scoring that barnstorming winner against Bournemouth, catapulted himself into a new contract. But Arteta's reticence to play him this season makes that a questionable decision. We've seen Vieira tried on the right without much success. And Kai Havertz really has been played far more in midfield and late and lately up front where he's looked the business. We, of course, have Gabby Jesus, who played on the right for Man City. But that was part of the reason he was supposed to have wanted to leave, signing Erling Haaland and not wanting to play on the right. Kaya Saka, since breaking through into the Arsenal team as a left back, but then increasingly as a, a right winger, has played more league minutes than any other player bar one in the top five leagues in Europe. He's clocked up an incredible 18,000 minutes as a player. And this season has played 27 of our 28 games, as well as playing in our Champions League games. And of course, apart from these two meaningless friendlies for England. Are we at risk, therefore, of injuring Bukayo Saka and more than that isn't there going to come a time where we do need to have someone else who can play there look I know that in the run in the last 10 games I know it's unlikely that Arteta is going to want to drop Bukayo Saka after all he never wants to drop Bukayo Saka and there is a school of thought that says it's actually better for a player to keep them playing rather than give them long breaks because the long breaks this interruption in their cadence can cause injuries in of itself but surely you can't expect Bukayo Saka to play every single minute. So this summer, should we expect to see what we didn't see last summer? And that is a signing that can come in and reinvigorate the right. Well, I'm kind of hoping no. And here's why. But before I get to here's why, would you please do me a favour and click like. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe. The channel's growing really well and I'd love you to be part of our burgeoning community. So why am I not hoping that we go out and sign an understudy to Bukayo Saka? Well, it's because I think we already have the perfect replacement, if Bukayo Saka ever gets some time off. 
And no, I'm not talking about Fabio Vieira, who's been tried there. And I think, as in all the other positions he's been tried, has been found wanting. His transfer value has dropped to less than half of what it was when we paid for him. And that's OK. I don't have a problem with us going out and buying players and trying them. Um, but honestly, I don't think anyone thinks that would be his best position anyway. So who am I talking about? Well, of course, in the West Ham game, it was reported that Arteta felt he had to play Ethan Wanieri because there were whispers behind him on the bench from players who I think it was supposed to be Jorginho saying, you've got to play this kid. He is so good. And at 17 years old, he has a world at his feet, has just signed a new contract. But I'm not talking about Ethan Wanieri. Arguably, his best position is not on the right wing either, although he has played there. I am talking about a Mario Cozia Dubri, who at the end of May turns 19. Older than Bukayo Saka was when he first came into the squad. Now, he's not maybe versatile enough to play at left back. And of course, the team that Bukayo Saka came into was nothing like the team that Mario Cozia Dubri is trying to break into. But along with Raul Walters, his contract comes up at the end of this season. And whilst all of the murmurings from Arsenal have been that we are in control of this contract, it looks really good, we're not worried about him leaving, you do understand why a player like him, just like Amari Hutchison before, might look at Saka and think, am I ever going to get game time? And certainly Arteta, not even throwing him on in games where we're wildly ahead, is going to give you pause for thought. Amari Hutchison is the apocryphal tale here. He left Arsenal because he so looked up to Bukayo Saka and couldn't see a route into the team. Decided to join Chelsea and, of course, only got one game there before they loaned him out to Ipswich. And he's doing great things in the Championship right now and could well be promoted with Ipswich. There is, of course, talk that he might sign there permanently. But he has been saying recently how he would warn Arsenal players against leaving that it's better to stay and fight for your place. The grass is not always greener, but there are a host of clubs in from Mario Cozia Dubri and why? Well, in his last six games in the under-21s, he scored five goals and two assists. He is one of the most exciting players for me in the Hale End Academy. Along with Miles Lewis Skelly, Ethan Wanieri, I think Raul Walters is a huge prospect as well. But what sets Amario Cozy Dubri apart is his eye for goal, his ability to play off the right wing and the left wing, and his running, his pace, his accuracy of passing, his all-round game just screams out to me that he deserves a chance. Is it likely, however good I think Amario Cozy Dubri is, that he's going to get a game against Manchester City on Sunday if Bakaya Saka isn't fit? Well, of course it isn't. It's far too big a game to throw someone in. Although we have seen Kobe Mainu pick up man of the match. And uh, he was a player who really impressed me when we played Manchester United in pre-season. Was unlucky with injuries, but is starting to fight his way back in. There is an old adage that if you're good enough, you're old enough. And Mario Cozy Dubri is hitting 19. This is not so young anymore. My hope is that the reason that we're not being linked with more players on that right-hand side is not just the fact that hardly anyone wants to come in and challenge Bukayo Saka, arguably our most valuable player for game time, but also because Arteta, even though he has proven over and over again that he doesn't use the young players enough, perhaps he is seeing something in him. After all, the same thing happened with Saliba, where he was almost determined to send him out on loan again, but pulled him into training and saw something in him that made him give him a chance. And of course, we haven't looked back from there. I'm not in training. I can't see why it is that Arteta doesn't necessarily think Amario Cozy Dubri is right. He has given Charles Sego Jr. a chance. As I mentioned, he has given Wanieri a chance. There was talk of Raul Walters playing more and that hasn't come to pass. And behind all of those, we have players like Miles Lewis Skelly, not to mention Charlie Patino, who's on loan at Swansea. But for me, for a long time now, I have felt that the brightest of these prospects is a Mario Cozy Dubri. I don't want to jinx him by saying I see a touch of the Thierry Henry about him. But certainly as an understudy to Bukayo Saka, he does many of the same things at a slightly lower level. He needs to be given a chance. So this summer, we are faced with the option of splashing some serious money on a player of the level of, uh, let's say, uh, Usman Dembele or Asensio, who, of course, went to Paris Saint-Germain. 
a Diaby type who can come in, someone like a Doku that we could go and get for big money, or we could trust in a Mario Kosu Dubri and at least give him some minutes. After all, we did with Reese Nelson. We gave him a new contract and put him on the bench almost every single game. And I don't think it's just Arteta that doesn't think Reese Nelson is quite at the level that we need. I would expect us to move on players, and some of those might include Emil Smith Rowe, which would be a heartbreaker, Eddie and Ketia almost certainly. But we could clear the way. And just at least try a Mario Cozy Dubri. That would be my hope. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you've seen anything in a Mario Cozy Dubri, you don't think he's quite up to the challenge. For me, every time I see him play, I think how exciting it would be just to see him come on for 15 or 20 minutes in a game that's already won. We might be running out of those games. Every game from now on is going to be like a cup final, to borrow the cliche. But... I'm going to put my neck on the line now and say I really think Amario Cozy Dubri has a strong future. I very much hope that we are going to get this contract done. And I want to hear from you in the comments if there are any other players that you think we should be looking to bring in. If you think that we should go shopping for a player instead of developing someone from Hell End. Because let's be honest, there's really no point in having an academy if no one ever graduates from it. And whilst we do have Bukayo Saka to point out as a glowing example of what can be achieved... There aren't enough of them. So, a Mario Cosa Dubri as one to watch, as somebody who should get some minutes, hopefully before the end of the season. Maybe in the Champions League final score a winner. Who knows? Anyway, till I see you again, be lucky. Lots of love.